Hello, my name is Matisse Cavodi. I'd like to welcome you guys to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the origins of the Mac Gargan Venom. It's one of my favorite incarnations of the character because for those who don't know, Mac Gargan was actually the Scorpion. A B-list Spider-Man. He used to be a Spider-Man punching bag. <laughs> he never did anything too important, but the thing is, he gets his hands on the symbiote. becomes this really, really interesting villain. Uh, a Venom that has no moral restraints, hyper-violent. Uh, really out to make a name for himself. This takes place in the Mark Millar's Marvel Knights Spider-Man series. Mark Millar just did a fantastic job on the first 12 issues of this series. And this is actually a, a subplot. Because the overarching plot of that those first 12 issues is that Green Goblin kid kidnaps Aunt May. Mac Gargan plays a pretty important role in that too. But... As I said before, he does acquire the symbiote, and we're going to talk about how he does it. Does it. So, in issue number five, we have Eddie Brock. He arrives to an airport. We don't know why. The thing is, what we discover, this is issue number five. In issue number six, he does something pretty that surprised me quite a bit, even for Eddie Brock as a character. He decides to auction off his symbiote. He's just, the thing is, he's dying of cancer. He can't deal with the sickness anymore. He can't deal with the symbiote. And um, so he, he try, decides to auction it off. The thing is, it just feels a little bit weird because Eddie Brock is like, he, even though he wants to kill Spider-Man, we all, all know about that. He's he is a sort of a hero at heart. He tries to do good, even though maybe his methods aren't the best. He's willing, willing to use lethal force and stuff like that. But the thing is, he's sort of a good guy. And uh, he decides to auction it to a bunch of villains. You can see Mysterio, the owl. Stuff like that there. The thing is, he sells it to the highest bidder, which are the Fortunato crime family. So, the thing is, this crime boss decides to buy it to his, the symbiote for his weakling son. The, the kid's just a straight-up loser. He, he, uh, he shows no respect. The dialogues, Mark Millard writes fantastic dialogues. Here we have this dad. He just shows no respect for his poor kid. He's just shitting on him during the whole conversation. It's like, my kid's a loser. Um, in the crime world, you have to have a reputation, stuff like that. He's going to one day take over the, the family business. He needs a symbiote just to make a name for himself and stuff like that. So the thing is, what we discover here in this conversation is that Eddie Brock decides to give all the money that he was given for the symbiote, which was like this insane amount, to help um, good organizations, foundations, stuff like that. Um, and he decided he he always had this in plan to do funnel this money for investigation and help people and stuff like that. So he gives the symbiote to the kid. What happens in the next issue? No, in issue number seven, I think. Peter Parker is at this school reunion, seeing all his old classmates and stuff like that. The new Venom, the Fortunato incarnation of Venom, attacks Peter Parker, wants to finally enact vengeance on his old host. And so a battle ensues, a couple of innocent people die because of this. Um, the thing is, this new Angelo Fortunato Venom is like really careless. He can't get the upper hand on Spider-Man. He's he's severely brutal, but the thing is, he just can't he can't deal the killing blow on Spider Man. Uh, one thing, the cool thing I saw in this story that I wasn't aware that Venom can do, or maybe Millar invented on the spot, is that he he can actually become an invisible, camouflage himself to such a way he can't be seen, and I thought that would be pretty cool. So the thing is, Spider Man just starts clobbering, clobbering this kid. He doesn't know how to use the full potential of the symbiote. So what happens, and this really caught me off guard, and I really like this part of the story, is that the symbiote just decides to abandon his host. It's like, man, Angelo, you're just my a waste of time. Uh, you're the worst host ever. And like in mid-jump, the, the symbiote bails on him, and the kid just falls and dies. And obviously Spider-Man tries to save him. But he falls to his death. Sadly, he dies. Like this, really surprised. Like in these, in this Marvel Knight series, in the first twelve issues, like Marvel Mark Millar does some really interesting stuff. Like I really enjoyed this. So this caught me off guard. 
I really liked it. And what happens is that what we see further down in the story, Symbiote's gone. We don't know where it went. While we have Mac Gargan, he's, he has become the hired muscle for Norman and Osborne. He's been thrown in prison. And he's trying to ne negotiate with Peter Parker over the whole kidnapping of Aunt May, which I'm actually going to get into in another, another video, what actually goes on here, because this whole dialogue is fantastic. Um, I really, really like the whole uh, concept behind the plot what drives Norman Osborn. And uh, what's really funny is that Spider-Man and Peter Parker doesn't recognize Matt Gargan without the costume. While Matt Gargan is worried, it's like, you don't know who I am? <laughs> like, he's such a loser that Peter Parker never realized who Matt Gargan without the costume is. So he's like sort of offended because of that. So they have this little chant. Things go on. And what happens at the end of this issue is that the symbiote decides his new host is going to be Mac Gargan. Like, Mac Gargan got his hand on this new armor that he, uh, Mr. Osborne had built for him. It's a super high-tech, super high-end. It's worth a ton of money. He's about to put it on, and the symbiote arrives. He's like, nope, you're not going to use that. We're gonna, you're going to be my new host. We're going to be the ultimate force to stop Spider-Man. So that was pretty awesome. So issue 18, we don't get to see the... Matt Gargan, Spider-Man yet, uh, Venom yet. We get to issue 11. So, in the story arc, Green Goblin makes this ultimate lineup of Spider-Man bad guys to kill Spidey once and for all. Thing is, Matt Gargan, like, and Green Goblin's like, where the hell is Scorpion? Like, I need Scorpion. I bought him this new high-end armor. He arrives with the Venom symbiote. Green Goblin's not happy. He's like, I didn't plan for this. What the hell's going on? How did you get your hands on this symbiote? So, in issue 11, a battle ensues. Spider fighting against all these villains, which I'm going to cover in another story. But the thing is, Mac Gargan Venom swoops in, grabs Spidey, gets him out of the battle, and they go one-on-one. -on -one. And here, Spidey realizes that this particular incarnation of Venom is a threat. He's dangerous. The guy's not ho pull holding any of his punches. He doesn't worry about collateral, collateral damage like Angelo Fortunato. But the thing is, he knows what he's doing. And he just doesn't care. And Spidey, realizing that this new Venom is such a threat, he does something that i never seen him do against a villain. He actually drops... A whole building on the Mac Gargan Venom. Straight up just to be able to take care of him and go back to the other battle. So this was really cool. And I really like this is the first introduction of this particular Venom. This character is going to play a big role in the Thunderbolt series. And during Also during the Dark Reign in the Dark Avengers. And um, I'm going to leave this video here. Check out Mark Millar's run on the Marvel Knights Spider-Man. It's really good. And in my next video, I'm actually going to cover completely the, the Green Goblin story arc that we get in that uh, uh, big overarching story arc. So see you guys next time.